Hello gentle viewers, this is OutGuardian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 23 with the Kansas City Royals. In our previous episode, we went 72 and 90, which is certainly not anything to write home about. It's not what you call a good record. However, it is two games worse than the season before, but we've already made some significant improvements to the way the team has been performing. Um, before we get started and talk about what we're going to do this episode, I wanted to address a comment somebody had made about passing on Greg Maddox, um, which I will note the commenter kept spelling Maddox wrong. Um, so maybe they don't Greg Maddox as much as they claimed. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm not going to give you a hard time for that, but, um, which is kind of the classic question, right? What is more important? A great everyday position player or a great starting pitcher? And this is something you can go back and forth about. Lots of people have lots of different opinions on this, which is great. I love hearing people have different opinions about how to build a team. I <clears throat> like here's the thing you can have one of the very best pictures in the world like say the Mets having Jacob DeGrom and it gets you nothing because where the elite pitchers matter most is in really big game situations and if your team isn't good enough to make the playoffs, an ace isn't going to help you make the playoffs necessarily because he's only going to be playing 30 games a season. Uh, if you do the math, that's less than 25% of the games in the season. And that's in this era, right? That's in the 80s, the 90s. In today's game, in 2022, you're maybe getting 25 starts out of a starter, which makes... It's important to have good starting pitching, but one over-the-top generational talent starting pitcher isn't necessarily going to drag you over the finish line. Um, now, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, yes. But as the game continues to evolve, I think the individual ace matters less than having a really good overall rotation. That's why I didn't take Maddox. And consider this. Without Greg Maddox, we saw the second best rotation in the ma in Major League Baseball. Now you might also say, but Avi, with Will Clark, you still finished, you know, dead last in the American League in terms of offense. And... I wish that weren't true, uh, but it is true. We were dead last in the American League in terms of offense, so clearly we need even more than we have right now. But that's why I didn't go for pitching. Um, <clears throat> is Greg Maddox one of the very best pitchers in the history of Major League Baseball? Without question. Without question. The only pitcher of his generation that I would say is probably better than Greg Maddox is Roger Clemens. Um, and then if you want to squint and argue about, say, Randy Johnson, I would accept that. Um, Pedro is really, really close. But I think for me, it probably goes Clemens, then Maddox, then Johnson, and then Pedro. Unless we're just talking about who would I rather have in a big game. And then it's probably Pedro... Um, then Clemens, then Johnson, then Maddox. Because if you remember, the Braves won one World Series the entire time Greg Maddox pitched for them. Which was in 95. You won't talk about which team they built. Still a little bit sore. A little bit of an open wound. But regardless, that's where we're at. That is... Now, I didn't follow the Braves all that closely. I don't know why they didn't win the World Series more. <clears throat> but the truth of the fact, the, the fact of the matter is that they didn't. 
Um, they made the playoffs every single season for like 15 years and they won the World Series once. So. Long story short, Greg Maddox would have been a tremendous get. I would have been very happy to have him. And it didn't end up mattering. It would not have ended up mattering if Maddox gives us the best rotation in the majors. It doesn't matter because we couldn't score. And that's going to be the real question this episode. Which is going to be, how do we get the lineup to a point where it's at the next level? Now, some of this is going to be a progression to the mean. Lenny Dykstra has 74 contact and couldn't hit 300. That, I think, is an anomaly that he's going to fix. Will Clark should definitely be hitting 300 plus um, and hitting even better than he does now. Room to grow there, too. Chili Davis hitting 257 is obviously really disappointing, but he still has a lot to offer, too. But we need a big time bat of some variety or some shape if we are going to get this on up over if we're going to use him over the hump and get him into the playoffs we have a relatively young rotation um only milt wilcox is like really really old but hershizer bossio and viola are all under 30 um and Morris is just over 30. And Morris's job is to do what Morris did in real life, right? He's there to eat innings and not embarrass himself. And that's what he does incredibly well. So, we need a better bullpen. Uh, we need to definitely upgrade a couple of spots there. But it's really going to come down to, can we get the lineup where it needs to be? At a minimum, at a minimum, there are four lineup spots we could improve at. Kelly Gruber is fine, but he doesn't fill me with glee. I, I don't think Mr. Gruber here, whether it's him or his brother Hans, um, is is going to get it done. A 655 OPS from a third baseman is not a great look. Even if he was gold glove caliber defensively, which he isn't, Gruber needs to go. Steve Yeltz is better than he looks because of his elite on base skills and the fact he's a pretty solid second baseman. I have no no objections whatsoever to playing him at second base again next season. Um, he brings him up to the table where would I like him to hit better? I absolutely would. But I'm not that annoyed by that. Bruce Benedict, again, is... Yeah, it's bad. Dale Barra might win a gold glove. I don't think he will because he has too many errors. He might win a gold glove, but he is, like, a non-factor. So we're talking four positions I'd like to upgrade. And in all reality, I'd like to upgrade right field, too. Hell, maybe even Chili Davis is not a great fit for this park, and we should consider moving on from him. I don't know. Um, I truly, truly do not know. But there's a lot of work to be done to get us to a point where I feel comfortable um, about our chances going forward. So let's try to get some of that work done. Now at the end of last episode, we went ahead and pushed out some contracts. Um, we're not going to bring back Alfredo Griffin. I'm not going to bring back Steve Henderson because he wanted like a million dollars that's too much money for a player who is good 
but isn't like a top like contributor because there's enough he doesn't have enough power the doubles are lovely i love me some doubles and the the triples are nice too but remember triples are very very vol volatile you cannot trust triples um so yeah he can happily move on and find a new team and and it'll be great um, I wouldn't mind one more starter, uh, but I'm not going to take a starter with the first round draft pick unless there's nothing else that's better. We're picking sixth overall, and we look at this draft pool. Oh, you're only showing me pictures. Okay, I was freaking out there for a minute. Okay. Um, this is a good draft to need a third baseman, assuming no one grabs him off me. I love me some Ellis Burks. Sticking him in right field would make us a much better team. Ahem. <clears throat> We got Matt Williams. You got Edgar Martinez. But one thing I think you you might be noticing, and you, if you do notice it, you're noticing it correctly, is that we're seeing more players that need development. We're seeing more players that are going to need a year or two in the minors before they're ready for prime time. Um, I'm surprised David Wells is rated so poorly. David Wells is actually a pretty good starting pitcher. Um, but yeah. Williams is fine. Martinez is not great. OSA thinks we end up with Tim Belcher. And I think the answer to that question is a big fat no. Now, I could always just lean into my pitching abilities and just try to go hardcore for that. But the real life Tim Belcher was merely fine. Um, and I, I'm going to keep coming back to that. Our lineup was dead last dead last there's a lot of medium to good talent in this draft though uh, it's not all that top heavy why do they got reach all the way down for ken caminiti i absolutely will not be taking ken caminiti i can tell you that for certain um my top three would probably be ellis burks edgar martinez and matt williams um, Martinez is going to end up being either first or DH, so I probably would rate Williams a little bit higher for that reason. Um, because Williams is at least a good defensive third baseman. Uh, but I don't know that for sure. I'd have to give that some, some long, hard thought. Uh, Ron Gant, hmm... Not so much. He always had the power-speed combination that a lot of people found very engaging. And he's certainly not a bad player. But... Mm, if all of my top three players are gone, then I might take a Tim Belcher because I'm pretty confident I get a second division starter a little bit later on. Um... Shane Mack is interesting, um, but I'm not convinced he is out uh, sensational. We've got a fair bit of money, too, so there's a chance we could fill one or more needs in free agency and not have to rely so heavily on the pitching staff. The owner wants us to improve our own base percentage and upgrade third base. I think that is a reasonable thing. Let us go ahead and sim forward up until free agency.
Uh, Mr. Ramon Lopez, what job was they even offering you? Oh, to be my class A manager. Yeah. How about Chuck Cotier? The Phoenix Spiders. I will offer you 100 grand. Because I want a really good pitching coach. Uh, if I can get one, we get Mr. Pape. Uh, quit doing this game. I think this, is, I think this is its way of telling me what kind of job he wants, which is, is fine. I don't mind that. Uh, I will give you 125 grand. Hey, the fans, they like them some Glenn Wilson. I guess that's, they're right. Oh, you could have an extension. I don't mind. Done. Yeah, the issue here is that I hate how many people here hate working with normals. Uh, it's really weird. Um, and that's what's hurting the cohesion. But I'm, I'm kind of hoping that with a bit of luck, like over time, we'll be in pretty good shape. Like, I think we just need to let him gel a little bit and see where that gets us. Uh, Mike Felder is fine. I'm not giving you Chili Davis for him, though. Like, this is just, what if you actively made your team worse? N no, that's an awful idea. I'm not saying I'm opposed to trading Chili Davis, not at all, but you're not going to get him from me for like eight cents. Go ahead and give me a Mr. Dick Selma and see if he will take that deal. And let's try to get Alan Coke, maybe. That seems good. Like, nobody else is paying minor league pitching coaches as much. So you need to just take the deal. Okay. Chili Davis ended up getting a gold glove. So good for him. And we're waiting on Selma to decide if he wants to sign. And there we go. Okay. Coaching staff put together. I wonder if Rick Aguilera got any votes for reliever of the year. He had a lot of saves, did Mr. Aguilera. He finished third. Uh, Tom Hankey was clearly better, though. No, no debate there. And we were 10 grand apart. He just wouldn't talk to me, though. Here you go.
Okay, is there a top tier young player that could transform our fortunes? I mean, it depends on how excited you get by a Harold Baines, which might be very excited. I don't know. But. Pedro Guerrero checks many, many boxes, and he is also redonkulously expensive. Probably not a good expenditure of our of our cash. Harold Baines is a really good hitter. He's really good. Is my park cruel to lefties or righties? It doesn't like either one of them. Okay. Um... So if I do anything else, 250 grand for a pretty good relief pitcher seems like a pretty good bargain to me. And it is I wanted to upgrade my bullpen, and while he is limited, of course, he's still a pretty solid choice. Oh, you would be an awful fit for the Kansas City Royals because you're a home run hitting second baseman and I, I don't need one of those. Now, there is one top tier hitter in this, in this free agent class and that's Pedro Guerrero. And I'm not even convinced he's... No, he is not, in fact, better than Harold Baines. Um... If I signed Harold Baines, it would pretty much cripple my payroll. But the thing is, I think there's literally one good offensive player in this entire free agent class. Like, yeah, I could go for a Jim Rice. And he might be fine, but he also might not be. Um... Dickie Thawne thinks he's worth $3 million. Uh, he's delusional. No. I don't care how good you are defensively. I'm not paying that much money. Yeah. Um... So I'm thinking about Jim Rice as a one or two year piece. Now, I have already had Jim Rice and you know I try to prefer to avoid bringing people back. That's true. And Harold Banks is just flat out better. I will make this offer. Yes, this is good. This is good.
Well, everyone likes my coaches all of a sudden, as they should. All right. Bob Allison, I'm... My guests are relatively flabbered that he has not yet gotten in. I'll go for Bo Belinsky as well. You know I love me a good defensive player that also hit pretty well, but I don't I don't think he's gonna make it. Johnny Callison seems like a pretty good bet. Um I'll vote for Fred Green just see if we can get him over the hump. I think the real life Tommy John should also be in the Hall of Fame. But yes, uh, Tommy John deserves to be in the Hall, in my opinion. I'm not seeing any obvious first balladers. I mean, this might be either Johnny Callison and Bob Allison make it. And I think one of Kuzman or Tommy John have a pretty good chance to make it as well. Um, yeah, Rich Rollins seems like a pretty good bet to make the haul. He's got them 3,000 hits, right? I'll go for Mel Stottlemyre as well. Good old Suds, not so much. I'll go for Lee Walls. Is that Billy Williams? Yeah, definite. So, Billy Williams is going to make it. And I feel pretty good about anyone that has 3,000 hits making it. I think the game is hard-coded to vote him into the hall. So, I think Callison, Allison, Williams, Rollins, and one of Kuzman, Stottlemyre, or John will make it. I think it's going to be a big Hall of Fame class. We'll see what happens, though. All right. Um, let us skim forward. How much more is Baltimore offering you? This is a relatively small amount over, so I will go ahead and increase my offer. If he gets into the $3 million, I'm out. Uh, I will happily scrap together a different thing here. We do get Ken Lynch. That's very nice. But here's the thing. I'm not going to get caught into a bidding war. Um, if other players want to pay Harold Baines a whole shit ton of money, that's fine. Uh, mm. Nope, you're too limited. You would be a nightmare in my park, and you're not that good defensively. I like this kind of player, but I don't think he would work out very well in, in Kansas City. If we don't come away with um, with Harold Baines, we're going to have to get creative about how to fill out the rest of the roster. We're getting close. 
if he gets another bump in his contract, then he can sign with them. Yeah, nope, I'm out. Mm -mm. Um, I'd almost rather bring in Jim Rice. Like, if I'm looking... Uh, what is Dickie Thawne actually commanding on the open market? He's getting $3 million and he's not worth it. He just isn't worth it. Um... I'm not giving you that long a deal. I will give you a three-year deal, however. I can live with this. It gets us a, a nice bat in the lineup. And it still gives me the flexibility to add another couple of free agents. I would like, if I can get one, one more starting pitcher to replace Milt Wilcox. So what do we got on the starter market? The inexpensive starter market. We have El Presidente. But then we also have Mike Witt, who... Let's go and offer a contract to El Presidente and see... You just want a one-year deal. That's great. How about a three-year deal? with a team option and a player option. There we go. All right, it is draft time. All right, so is there any reason to not take Matt Williams? This is a trickier sell, and let me tell you why it's a trickier sell. It's a trickier sell because Tim Belcher would instantly give us a... Mm. I need a third baseman. Right, that is the inescapable fact of life that I need a third baseman. And assuming his contact gets to where it could be, he's exactly what you would want. I'm going to draft Matt Williams, and I'm not going to think about it. Who took Walt Weiss? Like, I was low-key going to grab Walt Weiss in the second round if he was still around. 
Really? Okay. Oh, damn. Tom Gladden was in this draft? I didn't even see that. Huh. All right. Um... Interesting. A big speed and contact guy. Would profile quite nicely on this lineup. Um, I wouldn't play mid center. I'd move him to one of the corners, but. I do think this could be a good choice for us. The big alternative is like a guy like Jeff Robinson or a guy like um, Pete Smith. Neither of them fill me with like glee. Or we take a Felix for mean, but I'm gonna take Gerald Young. I don't feel amazing about it, but I think it's a I think it's a very solid choice. Okay, now I'm gonna take Jeff Innes because I will always take a quality reliever. Um, and now we're at the point where, like, none of the players are particularly impressive. Mike Brumley is a better-than-average utility guy. I can get some Mike Brumley in my life. And then, yeah, I just really can't be bothered at this point. There's nobody else here that really speaks to me. You know, I just forgot that I that it offered on um, on Jim Rice, which means I won't have a position necessarily for Gerald Young, but we'll figure it out. <clears throat> so we've gotten offensive upgrades at at least two positions potentially. Uh, three more, three of Jim Rice has signed. And I think that's going to really help us get where we need to be. There's obviously still some room for improvement naturally, but that doesn't mean we're in bad shape. Let's check out the Rule 5. Um, oh, I don't have anybody that's like important. Nope, not even a little bit. Nobody here does it for me. I don't see any reason to take any of these guys. I'm just done. Yeah, I think you got a little bit less than you wanted, but I don't begrudge you. And I do think this contract's going to turn out to be a mistake, but we'll see what happens. Really? Only two Hall of Famers? I genuinely thought, like, multiple people would make it in. Kuzmin and, and Billy Williams, huh? All right. 
Interesting. All right, we got Rice and El Presidente. So that's a nice pair of upgrades to the team. All right, Jim Rice is either gonna play left, right, or DH. If I'm wanting to play Gerald Young the first season, I probably need to put Gerald Young in right and let Jim Rice DH and then maybe back up every once in a while at one of the corners. I think that's reasonable. Um, like, I understand that you think Chili Davis is on the block. That's fair, but you're offering me nothing for him. Like, he's not a bad player. He's just overpaid. Um... So we're going to do Williams, Innes, Jackson, Young. I guess Murphy. Oh, shoot. I just added them all to 40 men. I meant to add them to... I didn't mean to do that game. I'm sorry. I did not mean to add all of them to the 40-man roster. I meant to add them to the spring training roster. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, my gosh. Why did I do that? Oh, I'm such a potato. That's fine. Yeah, I don't think so. Actually, what if I traded Chili Davis and got a really good package? Like, here's the thing, right? Let's talk about what Chili Davis does do and doesn't do. He's great at getting on base, has lots of power, and is a pretty good contact hitter he is quite a nice hitter but he wants to make three million dollars and i am not convinced that chili davis is worth three million dollars not in our ballpark not in a park where his home run numbers will always be suppressed so the question then becomes what would we want in return for him and I'm thinking if we can get a really nice return, it could jumpstart our our thing here. So what we're going to do first, we're going to shop player around. And I'm going to ask for a multiplayer package. All players. Um... Daryl Porter can't catch anymore, but Dave Parker would look kind of nice in a Kansas City Royals uniform. What else you got? He says this is a toss-up. The thing is, I don't need Greg Walker. That's my issue. Greg Walker is entirely superfluous to my needs. Nope. 
I mean, you know I'd love me some Sixto Lascano, but he's got a very long contract. He's already 33. That strikes me as a very bad risk. Jose de Leon still has a bit of life left in him, but the rest of the package isn't that impressive. Okay. Let's not ask for a prospect package. Jamie Moore and Alan Anderson are both starters. They're not really relievers. This one is tempting. This one is very tempting. Can I get one major league player out of this is my question. Can I get Greg Matt? Are you fucking kidding me, Minnesota? You have Maddox and Clemens. What the shit? Yeah, this is not going to happen. Yeah. I had to try, but holy shit. Damn, son. Would you give me Steve Kemp? I doubt it. No, not unless I give you a player I don't want to give up. That's fair. Could I get Tony Pena off of you? I could by adding in Kelly Gruber, and Tony Ping is actually a pretty solid catcher. He's better than what I've got now, so let's do it. All right, so you go right to the Major League roster. <clears throat> and I think Jamie Moyer probably gets a chance to make the team in spring training um, for just that extra oomph at the starting rotation. I basically just handed the starting third base job to Matt Williams, but in exchange for a much better catcher, I think I'm okay with that. In fact, I know that I'm okay with that. Um, Jeff Kunkel isn't that impressive to me. Richiet is whatever. Darnell Coles is whatever. When we get into spring training, I might trade Milt Wilcox. Potentially. Maybe yes, maybe no. All right. Really, you're going to start Bosio over Wilcox? Wilcox over Bosio? No, you're not. 
There you go. Nope. Still nope. I don't want Sam Khalifa. friends i'm going to have uh, a bit of a think about the roster and i will return in just a moment all right my friends we are at 31 of 40 and we're currently rocking 18 pitchers that's way too many pitchers and is an excessive amount of pitchers so um Wow, Chris Fascio's potential just evaporated. Like, really? Like, 10 seconds ago, your potential was actually pretty decent. And then it's just like, nope, it's gone. All, all, all right. Um, cool story, bro. I guess I'll send Basio to the miners then and let him see if he can figure out his shit because that's not a great look. Um, Alan Anderson goes to the miners. Young to the miners. Willis and Murphy to the minors. And what does that put me at? 13 pitchers. I only really want 11. So two more go to the minors. Uh, Moyer. And I think Howell. I think Mr. J. Howell. I'm going to try to trade him and see what kind of prospect I can get. Because... I can literally get nothing, which gives me a pretty good indication that there's a good chance that he can get through waivers in case I need someone later on. All right, that gives me 11 man bullpen. I'm actually short a player. Um, I'm gonna be short too, cause I'm not carrying three catchers. So what do I need? I need, um. I need a utility guy. Hi, Mike Brumley. I said you'd make a pretty good utility guy. I guess we're going to test that right now. And I need... Probably one more infielder. Um, what I'm going to do is really quickly check free agency if there's any interesting infielders left. And if there's not, then I shall cry. No, I'm kidding. Um... Just out of curiosity, there is the immortal Ricky Hernandez. It's, it's not what I was looking for, though. Um, uh, 
I will offer Dave Chalk a big fat zero in pay and then add him to the roster, assuming he assuming he takes my incredible offer. We're just gonna jump forward to opening day just to see if he signs and then if he does I'll promote him. So Mr. Dave Chalk is also going to go up to the majors as well. Do I have the immortal do not suck completely goal? Okay. Six outfielders does seem excessive, but that's fine. Uh, we'll figure it out. Let's get the pitching staff set up first. Gonna go five man rotation. And it's obviously gonna start with Hirschheiser, Viola, and Morris. Then probably Wilcox and Morris, or Martinez rather. Rick Aguilera, 100% is gonna be the closer again. Ed Lynch is enough of a borderline starter that I probably have to make him the emergency starter, which doesn't feel good, but I kind of have to do it. Um, and then Bob Kipper is going to be anti-lefty middle relief. Middle relief, middle relief, middle relief, and I want... Michael Jackson for this first season in the majors to avoid high leverage. Um, so this is what we're rocking here um, early on in the season. <laughs> Anything interesting on the waiver wire, I wonder? Not really. Yeah, it doesn't really grab me. Okay. So, the lineups and depth charts. We're going to nuke it all. And we're going to start assembling the roster. So, first things first. Um, We're going to go Dykstra Young at the top of the lineup. Then we're going to have Will Clark, Jim Rice, And then the question becomes, who is, uh, fifth hitter is going to be Matt Williams, um, because of his top tier power. And then the question becomes, who is our designated hitter with the current constructionist lineup? Is it Monsieur, uh, Glenn Wilson, or Daryl Motley? Motley's got some pop which I definitely want to try to use if we can. But Glenn Wilson is the more accomplished hitter. 
Is there a platoon split? No, they're basically the same. The difference is Motley's got a bit more home run oomph and Wilson's got a bit more general offensive capability. Um... We're going to try Motley as a designated hitter. And let me explain why. It is because of his uh, ability to avoid striking out. That's like what pushes it over the top for me. Uh, but Glenn Wilson's definitely going to have an important role on this franchise. So now we've got to do catcher, shortstop, and second base. That's all fine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and slot in Tony Pena at seven. And then Steve Yeltz can be second, and Dale Barra can be shortstop. Give me a depth chart, if you please. I am completely fine with this lineup as constructed. Now, is this a better lineup than last season's? Absolutely. Um, we've got a lot more secondary scoring to the point where I expect positive offensive contributions from at least seven of the nine players. That's way better than we had last season, right? That's way better. Um, go ahead and take Daryl Motley out, and then let's see how the depth chart gets reset. That's fine. I'm going to copy, copy, and paste, paste. We're counting an awful lot, though, on contact and speed, getting runners on base for Clark and Rice to drive in. And I think that's a pretty fair strategy. Remember, our park suppresses home runs. So we want to get secondary scoring any way we can get them. And it's a real big stadium. Uh, so triples are going to work well. So Dykstra and Young should be able to cut loose on the base paths and cause a lot of havoc. Um, I don't feel enamored of my middle infield, so we might try to look for an upgrade there as the season progresses. Um, the game doesn't like Matt Williams very much. I think it's not being fair to him. Like, right now, I agree he's nothing special. But, like, the downside here is Mike Schmidt, and the upside here is, well, the good version of Mike Schmidt. So I'm relatively happy about this lineup um, and what, what it's going to get us going forward. Um, any real quick extensions I want to offer? Dale Bear can go to hell. As can most of the rest of these guys, quite frankly. Um, I need a shortstop upgrade. Almost beyond anything else, that's what I need. I could get Jerry Dubinsky. No. Let's play... Oh, let's check the waiver... No, I already checked the waiver. Let's play some baseball for a month and see where that gets us. Um, that's going to be... Selheimer and Howell, both clearing waivers as predicted... Uh, Dave Chalk is going to retire. That's a bit sad, but that's all right. Damn, Viola and Hirschheiser each get a shutout. That, you love to see it, right? You love to see it. Uh, player development. I'm not seeing anything too shocking here. Damn, Dennis Martinez. Nice. El Presidente, indeed. Uh, give me one additional month, and then we'll see how things are going.
Uh, that is bullshit. You're not allowed to injure Will Clark. He is the soul of this team. Um. All right. Do I have a bat that I trust enough to replace him? Not really. Oh, sorry, uh, clear filter, please. Uh, go ahead and give me best contact hitters. And you're gonna go get to go right to the big leagues, and I'm just gonna slot you right into first base for right now. Um, okay, I want you to all like simultaneously just throw at every Texas hitter because that's some fucking bullshit. I don't normally go in for the unwritten rules bullshit, but you die now. Uh, game. You fucking wankers, I think is the the approved term, perhaps. We were off to a really good start this season, too. And now with Will Clark missing a month of the season, I think we're going to be in, in some trouble now. Not Smith. Not Smith. All right, who is the rookie of lay month? It's Matt Williams who hit 10 home runs, nice. All right, so the lineup is no longer 14th, it is now merely 12th, but the bullpen is really struggling. In particular, Rick Aguilera is not pitching that well. That is problematic. What is your deal, Rick Aguilera? Why you've thrown twenty-seven innings and you've given up eight home runs? Oh, uh, that's a problem. That is a real problem. We're gonna try Bob Kipper as the closer and make you a middle reliever. This means I don't have a lefty killer in my bullpen, which I'm okay with. And Michael Jackson is really badly struggling, but I didn't want him on the roster anyway yet. He's still very, very green. So I'm gonna send him down to the minors. And I think a Rob Murphy would not go amiss. Just a nice lefty killer is all I'm looking for. And I think he can deliver that quite effectively for us. 
Um, and then we'll see how this works out for us. I am deeply concerned about Bob Kipper because he does have that crappy movement, but he's also got lots and lots of stuff. So I'm hoping he'll just be striking people out so quickly that they can't hit home runs, but we'll see what happens. Jack Morris is struggling this season. This is Frankie Viola. But they're also both pitching effectively, so I guess we just have to suck it up for right now. Lineup-wise, I'm getting very little from Gerald Young, which deeply concerns me, but I have a feeling he'll figure it out. Like, a guy with 6-8 contact is not going to hit 233 over a season. I think he just needs more playing time, and he'll get there. Uh, Jim Rice is fine. Matt Williams is reasonable. Uh, Daryl Motley has quite literally been a lineup saver. He already looks like a really good choice to be our designated hitter. Um, let's keep going. Uh, for now, and then see how things look at the beginning of July. Um, you're not part of the starting lineup, Bruce, but thanks for playing. Um, no. Glenn Braggs has little to offer anybody, really. No, you're a role player, Dave Chalk. You're whatever I fucking tell you to be. Alright, we get Will the Thrill back. This is automatically the best news. Um, I'm going to see if I can get you through waivers. Uh, Will, save us, Will Clark. We need you. Did I ever tell you you're my hero? Uh, don't worry, I will never sing again. Maybe? I haven't decided yet. Uh, Jim Rice. Yes, please. Get back into the lineup, you cheeky sausage. And then we have Will Clark. He is unhappy, but don't worry, uh, we're gonna get better. I do have a plan to fix it. It's gonna be called, like, cutting half the damn staff because they're all being whiny bitches about... Like, I've gotta give the hitting coach the old heave-ho. I've gotta give the first base coach the old heave-ho. Yeah, I'm just going to let all the 87 coaches go, except for me, hopefully. Uh, and then we'll just proceed from there. We really need two things to happen in the second half of this season. Um, Michael Jackson figuring how to pitch is definitely welcome. That's probably going to get him a promotion real fast. No, it's Gerald Young is probably the most important piece that needs to get better. If he does, I think the rest of this lineup is very competitive until we get to 8-9. We don't have to be a top a, a top five lineup. We seem to be a top ten lineup. And then the rest will sort itself out. Um who among my relievers is the poopiest? Besides Rob Murphy. We gotta keep Rob Murphy. I'm gonna send Rick Aguilera to the minors, and then we're gonna call up Michael Jackson, and he's gonna be amazing. 
I'm going to make him my setup guy. He's learned a lot in the minors, has Senor Jackson, and I'm hoping that we see a lot out of that. All right. Anything else I'd like to do with this team at the moment? Um, I would love to upgrade a shortstop. That would be a true delay. I would pee my plant pants in glee if we could get a quality shortstop, and I just don't see it happening. Like, you're better than Dale Barra, but so is, like, literally almost anyone else. So, I'm... Um, yeah. Um... Interesting. Huh. Brumley's hitting okay, but for whatever reason, he's still at just replacement level. That's fine. Yeah, we need to get a better second base and better shortstop. Um, I don't know where we get that, though. So we'll just have to give it some thought. At the trading deadline, maybe there'll be more people available. I mean, again, does he pass the better than... Dale Barra test, yes, but that doesn't mean he's actually desirable. Then I guess you're cut, Bruce. Uh, thanks for thanks for playing. All right, so who makes the all-star team? I better have a Kansas City Royal. It's Will Clark and no one else. Um, yeah, that's fair. Um, a lot of these are big homer guys, and I don't have anything to really compete with that yet. Um, so Will Clark is our only all-star, and I mean, how good has Oral Hirschheiser been? Oral Hirschheiser, I think, deserves some consideration. Um, I think if we're paying attention to something besides just freaking home runs, I think that Lenny Dykstra would have gotten the spot. But also, I'm not, like, that annoyed or anything. I will suffer through, my friends. We will suffer through. And it'll be fine. Uh, it'll be great. Yeah, Terry Forrester ain't nothing special, so no thank you. Five hundred homers for Mike Schmidt. Uh so Damn Daryl Money. Or oh it's Don Money. I thought it was my guy. That's Daryl Motley. I knew that. I didn't know that. So what we have is a pretty okay team that is being drugged down by our second baseman and shortstop. And I guess our catcher too. Um, our catcher is certainly nothing incredible, but he's good enough that I'm not that annoyed by it. Um, but we're really struggling at second base and third and shortstop. The question is, is there any upgrade available in either place? And I think the answer to that question is no. I don't think there is an obvious choice.
Yeah, Mike Jackson to stop giving up homers, that would be great. But I just want him to just get meaningful pitching. I'm going to go ahead and bump him out of the setup role, though. And we're going to let Mr. Jeff Enos be the setup guy. I think he's a much better choice at this point in the season. Um, Here we go. Is there any player worth trading at the deadline? Milt Wilcox and Glenn Wilson both strike me as pretty good trade targets. Um, let's start with Glenn Wilson, and I'm going to specifically look for uh, infielders. And I will look for infielders of all flavors. As long as they're good, I will consider trading for them. All right, so I really like Pete Mackinnon for some reason. But the thing is, he's only a first baseman at this point. Uh, so, hard pass on him. Yeah, I mean, Tim Flannery isn't bad, but he's not great either. Paul Sterna is nothing impressive. Rick Burleson is just like... Again, is he better than Dale Barra? Yes. But that is, like, a pretty low bar. Yeah, I am not overcome by emotion with any of these options here. If I eat all of his salary, can I get an upgrade? Like a better player? Or is it literally just the exact same people? It's literally just the exact same people. All right. What if I add in Milt Wilcox? And I also eat his entire salary. Ernie Riles is, if he were a better fielder, I would consider him, but he's a little bit too flawed. Johnny Ray is like, he's fine, but I'm not being overcome with incredible choices here. Greg Gagne is pretty good defensively, and he's not a terrible hitter. He's honestly probably at the top of my list right now. Yeah, let's get some Greg Gagne in our lives, I guess. And then what if I ate none of their salary? Does that change anything? Um, so Greg Gagne gets called up and Jamie Moyer is going to get the rotation spot that was just vacated.
I'm just going to swap him with Dennis Martinez. Um, who else could we trade to try to get an upgrade? I mean, I'm going to trade Dale Vera. Um, I'm not going to get anything for him, but I'm going to try. Can I get anything of even remote interest for him? You know what? Randy Myers, you're in. And then I'm going to trade one more player to try to get one more infielder. Unless I have one, I'm going to have Jackie Gutierrez. I guess there's worth, worst choices to make, maybe. Of any though, um, hmm. Um, go ahead and give me all Greg all the time at shortstop. Is he better than Dale Barra? I mean, I failed to see how he could be much worse. I mean, yes, I know, you know, always think carefully what you ask for. I get it, but still, um, I think it's reasonable. All right, amigos, let us proceed with... Is there anyone else I'd want to trade? Dave Chalk is retiring anyway. I mean, is does Ed Lynch have value? Is somebody thinking, man, if only I had Ed Lynch, we'd win the World Series. Um, I doubt it, but if we could get a really good player, I think I'd be cool with that. However, I think we're just going to go ahead. Um, I will call Rick Aguilera back up and Chris Bazio, and we're just going to both let them just get a little bit of pitching in uh, every now and again. Because here's the thing. I'm probably not going to make the playoffs. I think that's a fair assumption. So I might as well just go ahead and give some extra innings to some youngsters and just let them develop a bit more. Uh, let us proceed with up to the trading deadline. I don't want a mediocre reliever. I don't know what makes you think I want one, but... Um... Ed Lynch has been surprisingly productive. Is it worth a contract extension? Yes. Um, I don't know why I was hesitating, but yeah, there's there's no downside to having a good long man in the bullpen um, that doesn't cost you a huge amount of money. So I am I'm here for that. If I could guarantee a top five pick without losing my job, I would definitely take it. But the thing is, I don't think I can guarantee that. I think if we don't finish in 500 adjacent, I think I'm fired.
Nice. Dave, you're retiring anyway, so stop talking, okay? Just, just stop before you hurt yourself. Would people stop fucking throwing at Will Clark? I swear to God. I will stab people in the freaking throat if they don't quit it. Okay? I'm, I'm tired of him getting hurt, and there's no reason for him to get hurt other than the fact you're deliberately targeting him. To just be, like, a tremendous asshole. So knock it off, okay? Uh, I want to check out the game log where he got hurt. Uh, where did, when did he get hurt? He got hurt on September 12th. Let me check out the team schedule. Yep, you fucking assholes. Okay, I want people stabbed in the throat right now. Stop throwing at my best player, you jackasses. I am agog with rage right now. Well, we did finish below 500, but we did go 80 and 82, which is, to be blunt, a pretty big improvement, right? Like, remember, all of last season, uh, we only won 66 games. 72, sorry. The team is trending in the right direction, and if Will Clark would stop getting hit by freaking assholes we'd probably be in even better shape. Oh, uh, you will not get the opportunity, but thanks for playing. The gents win the World Series, good for them. Um, I didn't get fired. Interesting. Jack Morris optioned out. Uh, so I will go ahead and execute the option of Mr. Dennis Martinez then. All right. Dave Chalk and Bruce Boschty both retired. Oh my, like half a dozen people have all retired. All right, I get to basically completely rebuild my coaching staff. All right, that's fine. All right. So I really want a controlling guy if I can get one. So before I do anything else, let's check the existing coaching staff in the minors and figure out who might make a fine position coach. Uh, Bobby Wilkins is reasonably good at a lot of things, but he's not like insanely good at anything. Ask you is fine. Ben Taylor is pretty good. Maybe we just hire outside coaches because, like, right now, yikes. Uh, I'm going to promote Ben Taylor to AAA, though. That much I will do. And Vic Corral can take the place of the high A hitting coach. 
Um, so first thing I want is I want a really outstanding hitting coach. And Vic Power seems like he'd be a really good fit. So Vic Power, I'd like you to become my hitting coach. Do we get along with any other kind of person? Uh, we also like personable people. Well, that makes sense. Next up, I want a bench coach. I would like the benchiest coach that has ever coached. And I want somebody who is very, very good at development to be our bench coach. I'll take a normal. I don't want too many crazy personalities. So I will take you as my bench coach. I need a first base coach. Somebody can really teach the infield, I think. I will offer such a position to one Marv Blaylock. And then assistant GM. I guess Humberto Rivera would be a good choice. He is a normal that likes controlling, so that's fine. We will offer him the job. And then I do need a hitting coach for a ball. Let's try for Orlando Ramirez. No, let's try for Steve Braun. Uh, Steve Braun would actually be the better choice. All right, coaching is set. Let us check out our arbitration deals. Is there anybody here that I don't want to keep? No. Well, Ricky Selheimer, I will non-tender him. I have no one better than St Steve Yelts, so I guess he can have a new deal. Uh, Greg Gagne actually did okay down the stretch for us, so I think he's at least earned an opportunity. I'm not going to guarantee you starting lineup, though, just in case I get a really good free agent or something. Uh, Daryl Motley has earned a raise, but I want to try to lock up Lenny Dykstra first. Um... I desperately need a top tier player, so I'm going to go ahead and lock him up for a whole shit ton of money. I mean, he's just worth it, right? There's literally no downside to having Lenford Dykstra uh, come back and get a big contract. All right. So let's now have a chat about how the season went and where we need to improve. Lenny Dykstra was the best player on the Royals once again. Um, I think this is going to be a continuing theme because the man just gets on base at ridiculous levels and steals tons of bases. Will Clark needs to stop getting thrown at. That is the only thing holding him back. People need to stop fucking throwing at him. Or I will have every pitcher just throw 200 mile an hour fastballs to vaporize your brains. Just knock it off. Everything else about him is wonderful. And, and he's done great. Jim Rice in year one had a very nice season. Uh, definitely a worthwhile addition. Uh, Matt Williams came in and showed that he is what we thought he was going to be. I'd love to see a tiny bit more um, average, but I will happily take a, a home run, a player spend that's almost 40 homers in Kansas City. Point blank, Gerald Young has to be better. 
He has to be better. Um, he has got to get on base a lot more frequently. But he's not far off either. He doesn't have a ton of power, but he steals so many bases. Like, he led the league with 89 steals, right? That's not a great stolen base. Not sure that is above 75%, isn't it? If we take a look here. Um... Damn it, man. What is your stolen base percentage? Don't make me do math. Yep, 75. That's the break even, so he did okay. Daryl Motley was good. Tony Pena was pretty solid. And we got better as the season went on. There's still clearly room to improve, though. There's definitely room to improve, um, particularly since we finished the season, you know, 10th in run score. But we're getting there. We are absolutely getting there. When it comes to pitching statistics, um, Hirschheiser was great, as always. Viola pitched well. Morris and Martinez are both pretty good. This might be the kind of time we might want to try to try to get a, a top tier starter. Um, what does Jack Morris want to sign with the team again? He wants to get paid. He's not getting it from me. I'm not paying $1.8 million for Jack Morris. I categorically refuse. I wonder why I can't offer him compensation. Has there already been offered compensation? Is that the issue? Like, what is your deal, bruh? Bruh? I don't know. I don't know why I can't offer him compensation, but that's all right. So, um, what do we need next season? Starting pitching. At least one starter, maybe two. We need shortstop and second base upgrades if we can get them. And then we just need another big bat. Somehow, some way. Um, next season, I would actually uh, lean to the side of a great pitcher if there is one. Uh, where are we picking next season? We are picking 12th. This is actually a really good draft for pitching, which is excellent news. Um, I doubt we're going to get, say, Randy Johnson, which would make me very happy. But I think there's a really reasonable chance we end up getting a starting pitcher. Um, um, the other option would be if we could get Craig Biggio. I'd feel not amazing about that. Because he's not the best second baseman. But... He'd be an okay outfielder, so that's one option, is maybe getting a Craig Biggio. Um, obviously, I would be ultra delayed with Robbie Alomar, and I have zero, negative zero, um, expectation that it would fall to me. It just ain't going to happen. Uh, there is no way in hell that Robbie Alomar drops out of the top five. I don't think Ken Hill is the starter I would take, but I would definitely take a starter if this is where we're at. Um, I 
I would almost certainly take Ramon Martinez before I would take that guy, Ken Hill. Oh, dang, Sandy Elamar's in this draft. Eh, that's fine. I don't know why you would take Mark Grace over Robbie Alomar, but I guess I get it. I guess I get it. I do not remember Carlos Quintana at all. Okay, I don't feel that bad for not remembering him. Okay. That's better. I was like, why don't I remember him? I watched a lot of baseball in the, the 90s and early 2000s. So I was like, nope, he's just some guy. Is there any good shortstop in this draft? I might overdraft for the right shortstop, but I don't think there is a good one. Yikes. Jeff Husson is the best shortstop in this draft. Holy shit. Uh, cool story then. I guess I'm going starting pitcher. Um, if Big Joe, Alomar, or Sheffield fell to me, I would give it a really hard think. It might take one of them. But in all honesty, it's probably going to be a starter. And they say that Sheffield, Alomar, and Bijou are all gone before I pick. Which is totally fair, right? Like, they are legitimately amazing players. Um, if I were picking higher, I would probably give it some really hard thought about picking one of those guys. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be a starting pitcher. I don't know which one, but it's going to be a starting pitcher is going to be our first pick. And then from there, uh, we'll just see who's left and try to fill out a couple more spots. Are there ending pending free agents who are just insanely awesome? Um, I would sign the shit out of Ryan Sandberg, and I'm sure he gonna want a lot of money. But yeah, like, a Ryan Sandberg is exactly the kind of player that I would consider acquiring. So, we will see what happens, my friends. Um, but I definitely want to try to make an upgrade at second and short and get a, a nice starting pitcher. Someone's going to pay Dom money like $20 million, and I'm going to laugh my ass off if they do. He's already 40. I mean, let's be realistic. Real life Dom money was like, okay. Uh, this dude's a Hall of Famer right now. Like, if he never touched a baseball bat the rest of his life, he would be a Hall of Famer. So, yeah. All right, my friends, that is going to conclude today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more OTP content. And uh, until next time, this has been Guardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good night.